Let's tell them. I don't know what to tell oh, Okay. Okay, cool. We're live. Woo! Hey, everybody. I am Liz Imperiali with Bucket List Entertainment, and I'm here tonight with Dino Cesares of Fear Factory. Yay! Yay, yay. It's actually yay. Cazares with a hard C. Oh, my God. I fucked that one up already. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's all good. A lot of okay. people say Cesares because they think the C is like a Caesar, but it's actually a hard C. As oh my uh as my friend Jamie Joshua would say, it's a hard C. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm sorry about that. People screw up my name good. all the time. Like, I get so mad. So I, I'm. I, I'm, I'm not mad at all. I'm not mad at all. It's just a, it's, a, it's a common thing, so it's no big deal. And I want to apologize for anybody out there who's watching this live that my internet connection is a little wonky because I am in a hotel room in Phoenix, Arizona, and I've been here rehearsing for the Soulfly tour. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, but I am uh, filling in for my good friend Max Cavalera yeah. and family for the the, the guitar position for uh, Soulfly. So I'll be doing this summer tour, and um, after that, you know, a lot of people have been really concerned, like thinking I'm going to join the band or I'm going to leave Fear Factory or something like that. But I'm not. This is just a fill-in thing for the summer tour. And I will be uh, right after that. I'll be going right back to Fear Factory. There'll be a lot of big announcements coming up for Fear Factory in the next coming months. So be on the lookout for that. And I'm happy to be here talking to you. Yay! Well, you know, you kind of answered already some of my questions and that one thing. So you're, you're making this a little difficult for me. But thank you. I uh, appreciate all that. I can just yap. I can just yap. I'm <laughs> I'm a good. veteran at this. You know, I'm a veteran at this. I've been doing yeah. this for 30 years, so I pretty much know. <laughs> I can pretty much answer every question. Like You're I, the marketing kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about saying that, but I just, I just, you know, know what's the good. I love it. I love it, and let's talk. And I'm happy for to be sure. here with you. Awesome. Well, I was gonna ask, like, so you, so how are you? Like, things just seem to be going really well for you right now. How are things going during the pandemic? Um, it's, it's Everything around. is, um, you know, once I got past all my legal issues, which was back in July 2020, um, once I got past all that and I was able to get the Fear Factor record out, um, everything seemed to be great. Uh, the record did pretty well. Uh, it's getting a lot of great reviews, which is really cool. But unfortunately, you know, because of the, the pandemic and because I was taking my time looking for a new singer, for those of you who don't know, our singer quit after 30 years. So I've been looking yes. for a new singer. Um, yes. And I'm first here to tell you that I have definitely nailed it down to one person. Um, I I'm, not gonna reveal, I'm not going to reveal who that is yet. Not yet. So okay. once, I'm, once I'm done with this tour, I'm going to go back, uh, back to LA. I'll be back in the studio. I'll be writing some new fear, new new Fear Factory songs with a new singer because I, I would like to introduce him, uh, him. with a new song. Oh, it's a with him. A new song. It's a okay. him, yes. I'd okay, like to introduce was, him with a new song. Okay, I was reading that it might be a woman, so I was going to ask you about That's that. True. Okay. That is true. That was true. Yes, okay. I addition a uh, addition a few women. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, it didn't work out. Um, okay. Not because they were female or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> no, um, because, you know, I wanted to pick who was ever cool. best for the position. You know what I mean? And it turned out to be it turned out to be a guy, you know. Is it, can you just tell us, is it somebody that we know? Because you were mentioning that you're, you're trying to get somebody that not a lot of people know. You want to give someone a chance and, like, really help them blow up. Is it someone, did you end up getting someone that, that's reputable or somebody that's a little more underground? Well, it wasn't like I was only looking for somebody that no, nobody knew. I was looking for all different, you know what I mean? Sure, if the guy turned out to be, or the girl turned out to be someone that nobody knew and I gave him that shot, yeah, great. I, I was open to all of it, what I'm saying. Okay. Male, female, whatever, known, unknown, I was open to all of that. Right. Um, and it turned out to be somebody who was kind of known, I guess, kind okay. of known. Um, yeah. any, any name he does have experience. He does have experience. I'll put that. Okay. Way. I'm sure he does. Like you, you're, you're definitely like looking out for that, for that experience. I'm sure with this type of project, like it's a big one. So, um, yes. are you like, can you give any like name drops of people that, that actually rehearsed for you that we would know or somebody that was interested? No, I can't. 
No, I can't. I can't reveal that. No, <laughs> okay. Um, I will be contacting some of these people and asking them if I can talk about that. Okay. And I would actually like to, because there actually was some really funny ones. Like there were some joke ones. Like some people sent me some joke auditions. Like a guy farting in a microphone, and you oh, know, no. a guy, a guy singing in his kitchen, and his cat jumped on him, and <laughs> you know, some funny stuff that happened. Which I would like to put a little compilation together and like you know put it right. and put it on YouTube or whatever for somebody yeah. to see because there was some pretty cool stuff in there, you know. For sure, for sure. So so things have been going well since the release of the album that just came out in June, and I know you've had, like as you mentioned earlier, you've had a rough ride trying to get this album out. It's it's music oh, yeah. that's been made since I think 2016 is when the music started being made for this record. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and so how? What are what is the reaction you're getting from your fans overall? Like, or you said you were getting good reviews. It's going well. What are your fans thinking of it like so far overall? Oh, uh, the fans have been really hyped on it. They're just really ecstatic that we actually got a record out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, due to all the turmoil that we went through. Um, yeah. But you know, it, it, it the reaction has been great. Great. Uh, the fans have been happy about it. Also, another thing too is that on September seventeenth. We're going to be also releasing the instrumental version of it as well. So people can do karaoke with it. They can do guitar solos over it. They can do whatever they want, you know. And so I thought it was really cool that, you know, uh, I, it was something that I've seen other bands do and I just wanted to do it. And a lot of people have asked about it, you know, because um, we have done like I've had done like guitar playthroughs where it's vocalists and you're just jamming, right? And right. and everybody is like, well, why don't you just release that, man? Why can we just don't release that stuff? And so, yeah. uh, so I, I, I'm answering their uh, their their wish. I'm giving them their wish, and so it's coming out September 17. It's going to be cool. Cool, cool. And you know, with with the the release of this new record, um, you said earlier as well that you were actually writing new music. Um, yes. Yes. So when, when are we going to hear something new? Like what? And is the sound going to be like the Fear Factory sound, or are you going to explore other types of genres a little bit? Like how is it going to? What's the sound going to be like? If you can tell us that. Well, now. well, I always like to try to explore different stuff. I always try to try to bring some new elements into, you know, Fear Factory record. You know, that's something that we've, you know, since the beginning of its creation, we've always tried to, you know, meld a bunch of different stuff together. You know, just to, just to create this formula that we did you know obviously with the with the different styles of vocals and you know melodic yeah. riffs and brutal heavy riffs and, you know so we've always brought in different elements so yeah i would still love to uh definitely you know try to create you know new fresh stuff all the time so yeah it's hard to say um exactly what i'm going to be bringing in because i haven't actually started yet but right. when I get back, it's I'm, it's not going to take me long. I do definitely want to keep, you know, the style that that the formula that we that we created way back, you know, thirty years ago. I definitely want to keep right. that formula. But just you know, yeah. bringing new little things here and there. Obviously, it's going to be different because we're going to have somebody different singing on it. So, yeah, um, I want this person. Um, this person also can represent the past, what we've done in the past, very very well. But I also want them to have. He's a little bit of his own identity as well. When yeah. he, you know, I, I think that you know sometimes bands need a need a reboot. They need something, you know, something I new agree. and refreshing. You know what I mean? And I think that this vocalist will definitely uh, bring that to the table. So That's I'm awesome. actually anxious to start this. And um, but you know, my buddy Max called me and said, "Hey, look, I'm in, I'm in this, I'm in this position. Will you come and do it?" And I said, "Hell yeah! I'm never going to pass up an opportunity." to you know work with max in any capacity whether it's writing songs or whether it's doing one of his projects or whether it's you know being on a tour you know right. anything to help my brother out i'm there oh yeah he's he's a good dude i met him uh, a few years back and he's 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 one of those people that you just want to literally curl up against and listen to stories because he has so many interesting things to say <laughs> like he's he's such well, a nice we person. have yeah, we definitely do have a lot of experiences, you know, yes. that, that we've gone through in our career. You know, he's been around at least 35. I've been around at least 31 years around there. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, we've, we've toured, we've been in really, you know, awkward situations, whether it's traveling around the world or, you know, dealing with uh, different band members and just, just odd stories, you know, that, that we have. Um, and that's, I think that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I like about him. He's, he's definitely um, an experienced guy, you know. Um, we, like to, we like to call ourselves veteranos, that means veterans, you know. Yes. Yes. Or lifers, you know, that this is our life. This is what we do, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we don't cry and complain about things, you know, we just do them, we get to work, you know, and that's just, uh, I mean, he's put out a thousand records. I put out quite a lot of records with different projects, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, what the one thing I noticed about Max when I was jamming with him, and this is kind of a, uh, it's a huge compliment, but it's kind of a weird comparison. I've always looked at him as like a James Brown or Prince. These that's guys. Amazing. These guys are like they're musicians at heart. It it it, it is in them. It's them. Um, the way he conducts, the way Max conducts his projects, the way he writes, and uh, you know the way he communicates with other musicians is amazing. And those are the things that James Brown and Prince did all the time. And you know, if if it was up to Max, we'd be doing you know thirty forty songs a night. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, he's just one of those guys that has that kind of talent, and uh, it's really good to be around that and experience that. Absolutely, and so are you. You're extremely talented. Like, don't uh, you know? You're part of that too. Both of you guys. It's going to be like well, it's a good combo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. And, thanks. And props uh, you know. to you for it, like for being so so strong throughout this whole process that you went through in 2020 with the lawsuit and everything that you went you went through. That's that's a lot to go through. I personally can relate a little bit when, when it comes to trademarking and having to, you know, fight with who you thought, you know, I guess, I don't want to say who you thought were your friends, but it's, it's, it's tough to be in that position. Um, how do you, how did you handle it personally going through all of that? Like what were, you know, it's, it's tough. Well, this is how I look at it. Uh, I lost a lot, but I gained so much more and I'm very, you know, happy where I'm at right now. Um, you know, I have to be, you know, that's how you have to be. You just got to move forward. If you just keep on doing too much in the past, then you're just going to be stuck there. So I just yeah. look at it every day. Uh, I wake up. I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. I'm happy to be playing in front of uh, or writing music for people who enjoy it. You know, I love that. Yeah. That's what I live for. Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect answer. Um, <laughs> Do you think that there's going to be, I'm a huge 80s nerd, so do you think there's going to be any more 80s covers coming with Fruit Factory? It's funny you say that. It's yeah. so funny you say that. <laughs> yes, because I've been thinking about like Flock of Seagulls. I've been thinking like out of the box, you know what I mean? Somewhere that yes. maybe somebody hasn't gone yet, you know, as far as the heavy. Because, you know, uh, I love Sirius XM and my boy Jose Mangin at Sirius okay. XM. And there's another guy there who has... Uh, he does the corridor of covers. I can't remember his name right now. I'm, I'm really sorry if you're watching this. Um, but he has the corridor of covers. And, um, you know, I always look at what cover songs they're playing, you know, on Sirius XM. I'm like, well, nobody's done that. Everybody does Black Sabbath. Everybody does Slayer. Everybody does, you know, these, these you know, typical stuff. I just want to, like, go out of, far out of the box and do something. Good. Something I, have a, I have a request. I have a personal request. If you'll okay. Take it. Um, okay. I, I want to dance with somebody, Whitney Houston. <laughs> I want to dance with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. make everybody sing that song, so <laughs> if you can do that, yeah. One, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So, what um what bands were you getting in trouble blasting in your bedroom as teenage Dino? Oh my God. I, it was funny. I was telling Max a story the other day that um, when I was, when I was like 15 years old, um, my dad sent us to stay with our aunt. Okay. Um, my mother, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get too sad or nothing like that, but my mother passed away and my dad said he needed some time alone. So he sent me and my younger brother to stay with my aunt. Right. And she owned a bell, a bell pepper packing business. It's weird. Right. So when I was 15 years old, I had to go work there. But I brought a crate of records. I had like Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. I had like Saxon, you know, uh, Exciter, Metal Church. I had all these records, right? Scorpions. 
And you know, I brought them with me so I could listen to them on you know record player. I even brought the little portable record player. And so one day I get home from work, you know, packing her bell peppers. <laughs> I get home and she threw her records away. She threw my records away. Me and my little brother, my little brother was like crying. I'm like, what's going on? And she threw our records away. And I was like, so pissed. I called my dad. And my dad's like, Well, sorry, that's where you're at, you know. You gotta deal with that. You know, and I was like, you know, I, we, me and my brother would save our money, you know what I mean? And we would go buy these records, you right. know, and uh, wow. yeah, that whole experience. It sucks that she threw them away. I think, I think she saw a number of the beasts, and that's what really set her off. It was like satanic and yeah, scary. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty hardcore. Just like throws them out, no no questions asked. That's uh, yeah, it was about it was about 15, 20 of my rec 15, 20 of my oh, records, if I remember. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did you end up? I'm sure you got them replaced at some point. Of course, you know it took a while to get it took a while to get them all, yeah. all replaced. <laughs> what was the very first song you learned on guitar? Um, um ACDC. <laughs> oh, nice ACDC. Okay. I want to go. tell you a story about, better, better, about a woman I know. It's um, a whole lot of Rosie. <laughs> nice. Very first song, interesting. Yeah, um, it was on a Cusa guitar. Oh, I was about, I was about almost ten years old. About about ten years old. Oh. Uh, I had seen ACDC on TV, and uh, I was like, I knew that's what I wanted to do right there. That's that's, a, that's ACDC. I chose that. They're always the staple band for children to like. Like when if if you're if you're a child and you see and you you want to learn ACDC, you're 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 like a rocker for life. It's always ACDC. Yeah, I mean, they were they were like you know you look at Angus Young, he's wearing a schoolboy outfit, you know what I mean? He's head banging and dancing all across the stage, a lot of energy in that guy, and I was like, yep. and I was just really connected it right right away, right away, you know what I mean? And it's just like my dad, my dad loved mariachi music, so there was an acoustic guitar laying around, and so I picked oh. it up, and that's kind of like what I was like, but that bad a bad you know. <laughs> <laughs> And 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 you're you're self taught, or did you did you both like take lessons? Like, what like what uh, is your history with with guitar playing? It's definitely self taught. Um, I tried to take lessons here and there, but they weren't teaching anything I wanted to know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, do you know this? Do you know Iron Maiden? No, what's that? You know, I was like, well, forget it. Okay, so you just you're not a teacher. That I want to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I have I have one for you because I I think you're you're like a bit of a especially there's one question I have later on that I'm really curious about but if you were asked to write a movie score for like one of your favorite movies which movie would it be? Oh, obviously I I, I felt like I already wrote it. Uh, D manufactured would fit with Terminator One and Terminator Two. You know. There you go. I felt like I felt like I already wrote it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's um, Genexus, we have a record called Genexus that came out in 2015. That would totally fit with Blade Runner. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I I feel like I've, we've already wrote those. <laughs> Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies, and that is true. That is a good fit, actually. Yeah. yeah. Obsolete, obsolete would probably fit with Terminator Salvation, which is a killer fucking movie. Oh, yeah. Um, That's true. Yeah. So I think that was, you know, a lot of, lot of you know, lyrics and soundscapes and Themes yes. were inspired from those records. I mean, sorry, oh, from yeah. those movies. Sorry, the movies. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. that, that I didn't know. So that's that's really awesome. Um, there's one thing, like while we're while we're talking about movies, that I was curious about because um, first I found because uh, I know that Mortal that, that you you go, you guys are on the Mortal Kombat soundtrack uh -huh. from the '95 uh -huh. movie. Um, were you in the movie? No, we weren't in the movie. Which I wish we okay. were. Because it's uh, at least one of us. It, you have an IMDb account, and it says that you were in Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil. But I was like, "What?" Well, I the songs the songs were yeah. in the movie. Okay. Yeah. So we we personally weren't in the movie, which okay. I wish we were. <laughs> yeah, that would have been badass. I would have had so many questions that because I just couldn't find. It just said actor, and you know, Kazara is actor, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yes, I've been in movies, but not those. <laughs> which movies? Which movies have you been in? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, so, 
Fear Factory, Fear Factory's anniversary is technically on Halloween. Yep. So what, like, what were you guys doing on Halloween 30 years ago to come up with this okay. project? Tell us the story. Yes. We, oh, you know, we've been asked that a few times. Um, okay. um, it just so happened that, you know, we had just finally got a rehearsal room, right? We had okay. just rented a rehearsal room. The guy gave us the keys on the 30th. And for some reason, okay, this is in South Central LA, right okay. in the height of the gang era. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you had the, the Cribs, the Bloods, you know, the the MS-13, and you had, you know, all different kinds of gangs, right? right? And we just so happened to move our gear in Halloween. We moved all our gear in there, kind of set everything up, right. kind of did a little jam, but really because we wanted to go, you know, celebrate Halloween, obviously, right? Yeah. But we noticed that when we walked out of the studio, that it was already dark. It was like about 8 o'clock at night. And we walked out, and we're like, oh, my God. And we seen, like, everybody – just running the streets. The thing that really freaked us out was that there were people in the hood dressed up like the warriors. We're all like, you know, half blue, half white. You know, they're face painted. They're all carrying baseball bats. We're like, damn, we got to get out of here. And so that's how that night went. That's crazy. That's yeah, it was yeah, like seventy first. It was like seventieth like, uh, in Vermont, something like that. Oh my god! So it was in that the hood, sense. yeah. Amazing. Um, so, so technically, this is this is my, my final question. I see that the, the the room is getting a little busy. So, um, so okay. we asked this to we asked this to all of our victims. Uh, you know, it's part of our cheesy our, our cheesy. I think game. you're my victim. Oh no! Oh, okay. <laughs> it's um, the other way around. It's the other way around. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so. What is left? I mean, you've, you've accomplished so much already, but what is actually left on your bucket list if you have anything left? To write songs. The, the things that bring me joy is probably the same things that, you know, other people enjoy as well. And it's just writing good songs, playing with people that you love and like, you know what I mean? Experiencing new things in music. You never stop learning, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, one of the joys is putting that smile on people's faces because you wrote a sick riff or a killer song, and that's that's what's still left for me to accomplish is to keep doing what I'm doing and what I love to do. Right. That's amazing. That's, that's a nice thing. And clearly your fans are like saying these adorable things here. This, the, the caps are just screaming at us, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, now I can see them. They're popping oh, up at the bottom. Yeah, I'm too busy looking at the bottom. camera, but now, now I see them. Oh yeah. Up yeah. At the bottom. It's the, we're going to Jason, Jason, everybody, Jason Greenberg's in the background moderating this, this, uh, this interview and he's going to be posting your questions shortly um, and your comments. So thanks for, for tuning in everyone. Uh, we can start with the questions now and uh, okay. Jason, you're, you're good. So what was life on for, from Tom Jancy? What was like, what was life on the road for early Fear Factory? Like around 95, were you touring in the same van? Yeah, we, we um, started in, started in a van for a while. Um, I, uh, just remembered when we graduated to a bus, we were like, oh my God, this is like <laughs> the best ever. I can sleep. I don't have to drive. You know what I mean? I can actually have a beer and be all right, you know? And right. that was that was so much fun when we got into a bus. Um, but, you know, in some ways, you know, something was lost in when we got into a bus, you know what I mean? Because when you're in a van, you're in a tight, you're, you're, you know, when you're in a van, you're a tighter unit. You get to see the road. You get to see things out there. You know what I mean? You get to, you know, just experience life out there. But when you're in a bus, you're in a dark tube. You're in your bunk. You can get right. on your phone, your iPad, and you kind of don't see the road anymore like you used to. So that was the only thing I missed about not being in a van, like driving. You, you see shit when you're driving. You know what I mean? Right. So. Oh, that's kind of like, – I see that. I get it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Some people are like, fuck that. I'm never going back to a van. Um, we've gone back to a van, you know, on short tours. You know what I mean? Like you do a couple couple weeks tour. Right. We go back in the van. We're like, yeah, check this out. It's like how we used to be, blah, blah, blah. And that right. was uh, really cool. But, yeah, I used to love uh, I used to love that van back in the day. And then um, I remember that, you know, during the manufacture, we toured with a, we toured with a lot of bands. You know, Megadeth, yeah. Iron Maiden. 
you know. I saw you guys on that tour. <laughs> wow. And we met, we yeah. actually met, like, back then. So yeah, we were in a van. Yeah, we were in yeah. a van. And it's like, I remember they gave us a case of beer, and we're like, where are we going to put it? You know what I mean? We had nowhere to put our beer because we had a van. Some people oh, were like, well, why don't you just drink it? Well, that's too much to drink, but I'm not really much of a heavy drinker. But, um, yeah, we were just like, what do we do with all this beer, you know? Um, but when we got a bus, we knew exactly where to put the beer. There you go. Um mm -hmm. I remember that when we got to England, um, we were much bigger out there. We were touring with Ozzy, actually. After the uh, after the Ozzy tour, you know, the band really skyrocketed in England. We started getting yeah. gold records out there in Europe, and oh. I just remember that we finally did our own headlining tour. And then I felt like the Beatles because we were like doing, we were like have to literally run to our bus or run to the club because kid mobs of kids just wanted to you know to, to to get to to chase you down and get whatever they could get off you. And I mean, it was just like, it was crazy. Like you felt claustrophobic. Right. And it was, it was a cool experience because I never thought I would experience that. So. Well, that's, that must've been an amazing feeling. Like that's. Yeah. It's much more mellow these days, but yeah. Yeah. But it still, was cool you know what? Yeah. It's, it's still nice. It's still nice to have those memories and now you're still yep. feeling it. So, you know, Thank you. it's good. Yeah, of course. Um, next question. What was the biggest, from Eric Overturf, what was the biggest shock for you in the band, but didn't set in until after it happened? The biggest shock in the band that, you know, that people started to pay attention to us. Like, d manufactured really opened the doors for us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Really, you know, it when we toured with Ozzy, when we toured with Iron Maiden and all those bands, you know, it, it, it made me realize that people were listening, not just not just fans, but people in the music industry were listening. Like, hey, we need to take this band out because you know they're doing something that's fucking cool that we like, or you know that could that could become popular, or they're doing something different. So that was that was one of the big things that I noticed. Okay, that they were listening. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, our very own Jason Greenberg. Do you have any Roadrunner United stories that didn't make the DVD cut that you can share? Ooh. <laughs> Good one. Um, I just remember like we were doing rehearsals of the Road Roadrunner United. It would be like me, me, Joey Jordanson, Paul Gray, Adam Deuce, Andreas Kisser. That we would just you know go to different clubs and just party and have a good time. You know, just uh, and we always you know. You know, obviously, we have one of those drunken moments. Man, we should start our own band with just everybody here. And, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, um, I'm not sure if that was ever said on the Road or United DVD, but that was the feeling that I had every time we went out and partied and stuff like that. It was cool to, to party with everybody from all those different bands. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Uh, next, from Donald Quintana. Any plans for covers? Okay, so which would you... We covered you know, that. Like yeah, we've already talked about that. <clears throat> so I think we're good there. We, we were going to do Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody, in case uh, anybody's wondering. Uh, <laughs> okay. And next, uh, Jason Peg Pegram. Hey, Dino, have you ever played a nine string? Yes, I did play a nine string. Ivan has put one out uh, a few years ago. Um, but I wasn't into it, really. It was just, you know, too low, too much. So I never got into it. I always stuck with my seven and eight string. Right. There you go. Uh, okay. So guys, like uh, the next question, we've already talked about this, but uh, it's it's any. Jason's not gonna. Okay. Jason's not gonna share it. But it was any word on a new singer yet? It is. Oh, we already not, touched on that. Ex, we are not allowed to expose that information yet. But there is a singer, yes. right? It's just we yes. have to wait. Okay. Yes. So there you go. We only know that it, that the, that the singer is male, and that's it. So that's the only that's thing we know. I've been trying, everybody. Yeah. I've been trying to get it out of him, but he won't tell me. <laughs> uh, okay. Next, uh, Billy Franco, Dino. Any plans? Did any plans? Did unite with John Lippe? Or um, I don't have any plans at the moment, but I'm definitely open to the idea. Um, basically, what this guy is talking about, he's talking about the band called Brujeria, which was a Brujeria, project. That yes. Yes, Sorry. which is a project that me and this, a singer named John Lepid started um, back in 1988, December 88. Um, and, yeah, I had left the band in, what, I don't know, 2009, something like that, 2010. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 
maybe a little later. But anyways, yeah, uh, I had left the band. I got, I just had too much stuff going on. Um, but I, you know, I'm open to the idea of coming back and doing something with the band. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, I do dig that band a ton. You have members of Ethan Moore in it too, and all kinds of super. Groupies. Well, we did. We we, we did. Yeah. But me, me and Billy Gould had left like a few years back. Right. Okay. Any any other questions, guys? Now is your last chance to ask Dino questions. And while we're waiting, I'll just I'll just plug in some some stuff going on on Bucketless Entertainment for the next couple of weeks. Um, well, the next week rather. I'm not going to share too much, but next week we're going to be interviewing Chris from Anti Flag, um, and we are going to continue with more cool new shows coming out on our channel on Bucketless TV on YouTube, Bucketless Entertainment on Facebook. Bucketless ENT on Twitter, Bucketless Entertainment on Instagram. Um, and there we go. See, we have a second vote for Whitney Houston. I would love the cover with Whitney. So, <laughs> well, we couldn't we couldn't do it with Whitney, but No, but <laughs> okay, come on, bad joke. <laughs> um, but but yes, we're we're getting more popular. Uh, okay, so there's one more comment here. We're gonna grab that one. More okay. Alex Carter, more new tracks, just like Full Metal, Full Metal Contact, maybe in the works. So, uh, yeah, 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 possibly. Yeah, he obviously likes that track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll take one last question, guys. So we have from Billy Franco. Uh, do you make, know, make it a good one. Get a good one. Yes. Get a, hopefully, okay. do you know you remember when the fire marshal showed up over at the Mateo gig back in the days? Oh my God! I was so pissed off. They, um, we pay. Uh, Mateo Street is a street. It's like in downtown Los Angeles, like the industrial part of downtown Los Angeles. Let me let me paint the picture for you. The industrial part of downtown Los Angeles. Um, it's it's a uh, it's a little it's a it's a long. It's in between two buildings, like a parking lot in between two buildings. They would set up a stage and they would have shows there, right? And you know, there was an overpass right above us. You know what I mean? And, and, um, somebody must've called the cops while we were on, we, we were playing and they shut the show down. Obviously there was at least a good 300, 400 kids there. Um, they shut it down. They had the helicopters hovering around with the light on everybody. Wow. And then the cops said they were going to take away our gear. They were going to confiscate our gear. And we almost started crying like, Oh, you know, our gear. <laughs> Wow! They're gonna take over. Like we, you know, we were thinking like they're never gonna give it back or something like that, you know. But they just said that. Luckily, they let us go, and nobody got arrested, so that was cool. Okay, interesting. Yes, I do remember that. As that's that's the question. Yeah. That's great. We have two more that I think are pretty good that we'll we'll grab. And okay. That's it, guys. Um, so Phil Bromfield, hey, do you know what was one of your worst experiences playing a live show, or have they been all pretty smooth sailing? Uh, you know, we've been in so many different situations, you know, where the power gets shut down, where, you know, people get stabbed at a show. Uh, um, uh, yet yeah, there's one time where we were playing a show, another, another one of those, you know, bad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hello? Oh, no. Right. We Hold almost on. lost you. You're frozen, but we can kind of hear you. Okay. Okay, you hear me? You're back back. Yes. Okay. okay, so this, this is another one of those back here parties where they kind of combined two shows together. So it was like a metal show, and they had us, and then yeah. after that, it turned, it turned into a rave. And we're talking about they were talking about in back of somebody's house, like a big oh. yard back. Of his house. Wow. So for some reason, you know, the crowds didn't mix. Next thing you know, hell broke loose, and there was like a lot of people, you know, fighting and stabbing each other, and it got crazy. And I remember that. I'm I'm running to the truck, you know, with my amp and my guitar, running to the truck to throw oh throw stuff in the back of the truck, and somebody grabbed me from behind, and uh, this dude was falling, and he grabbed my shirt to try to catch his fall, but my shirt ripped off, and the guy fell to the ground. It was because he was stabbed. Someone got oh stabbed right behind me, and he grabbed my shirt. You know, he was like, Ugh! and so my whole shirt got ripped off. See, that, that was a pretty crazy experience. I can um, there's another time. Uh, there's, there's another one where we were in Kansas, and 
uh, I used to wear a shirt that said in racism. Right? Okay. It was, it was a shirt that was put out by Jello Biafra from the dead Kennedys. And right. he had his own label called alternative tentacles. And so the shirt said end racism really big. Right. Yeah. And he used to wear it on stage and a skinhead jumped on stage and said, take off that shirt. I'm like, fuck you. I'm not taking out this shirt. And then, but he, but then he reached, he pulled his pants up from his ankle and he pulled out a little boot gun. And I'm like, okay. I took my shirt off. I'll go, okay, here you go. I took my shirt off. And then, like, all the security cards, and he took off running. You know, all the security cards tried to grab him, but he took off running. Yeah. Oh, my God. So that was, like, totally pre dime bag. You know what I mean? Like, I could have got shot for wearing a shirt that says in racism. We were on, oh we were on tour with Obituary. That was 1994. Oh, my God. These are yeah, things it's crazy. Don't forget, yeah, that's that's insane. Oh no, definitely not, definitely not. Oh my god, uh, these are going to be stories in my book. Yeah, that's from the sounds of it. Yeah, lots of lots of interesting things, and there's there's one more here that I'm going to ask. My my oh, demanufactured sorry. life. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so any plans for coming to New Mexico? Because I've always wanted to see if your factory always my band. I've been dying to see you since 12. I'm 28. Aw, that's adorable. I laugh out loud. He's put loser after that. He put loser. No, um, loser. no, I know, but he put that. I'm saying, I'm not saying yeah. I said that, but no, I yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, frozen again. <laughs> Sorry. Hopefully, uh -oh. comes back to us. Okay, I hear Hello? you. Yeah. I can't reveal too much information. Okay. You got me? I got you now. I can't reveal too much information, but we will definitely be on the road next year. Yay! Okay. That's that's good. Excellent. So expect okay. those announcements coming up soon too. Awesome. Are do you have any any like way to are you coming back to Canada at, at some point? I'm in Montreal. So oh, oh yeah, no doubt, eh? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt, eh? Uh-huh. We don't say it too much in Montreal, but I say it a lot. So, um, <laughs> uh, okay, perfect. Well, I think, I think we're, we're coming to an end, everyone. Thank you so much for, for tuning in and your questions. Thank you, Dino, for being a part of this. It's really, really kind of you to take time out of your, your, your soul fly schedule and, and in a hotel room. <laughs> and, uh, uh, did you want to plug any last minute things before we, before we end the night? Yes, I do. I do. There's a couple of things I want to say. Uh, one is definitely come out and check out Soulfly. I'll be playing guitar with them. Uh, yeah. We start the tour this Friday in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then it goes all across the United States, and then it ends all the way September 5th, 25th at the Marquee Theater here in Phoenix, Arizona for the D-Lo Fest. Um, awesome. Also, be on the lookout September 17th. We will be releasing the Instrumentals of Aggression Continuum, only on streaming, not physical. So no okay. CDs, no vinyl, just on okay. streaming or anywhere you download and listen, listen to music. Um, also in October, there will be remixes as well. So we are working on remixes for the record Aggression Continuum. Reese Fulber is definitely uh, the main guy featured as the Reese Fulber. Uh, in case a lot of you don't know, he's a keyboardist from Frontline Assembly. He's played with us, uh, recorded many, many records with us um, since 1992. Um, so he will be re remixing a few of the tracks on this EP. It's going to be an EP awesome. of remixes. So, And that is going to be called Recoded. Ooh. Ooh. Love it. <laughs> so that'll be sometime, sometime in October. Awesome. And that's it. And I want to cool. say thank you to all the fans who've supported me for the past 30 plus years. Um, I can't wait to see everybody out on the road. So, and everybody stay safe out there. Uh, you know, I'm a little nervous going on the road, this whole COVID thing that's going on, uh, this whole Delta virus that's, uh, you know, yeah, that's taking a lot bad. of people out. Yeah. So we're definitely bringing gloves and wearing masks and, okay. you know, we're going to try to be as safe as possible because we don't want this tour to, you know, get canceled or postponed or nothing like that. So, yeah. Can't do that. So everybody be safe that's coming out to the shows. Um and have a good time. Yeah. Thanks again, Dino. Thanks everyone. And we are we are off for the nights. Thank you very much, Liz. I appreciate you guys giving me this platform. Oh, thank you. 
thanks again. Stick around for just two seconds. We're going to end the broadcast and we'll just do a quick chat behind the scenes once. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> Jason.